What up guys? So one of the main questions that I get all the time is what if I only have an hour a day, three times a week to train? And to me that's a pretty tough question because it really depends on your goal. But I'm with Jason here who is a CrossFit Games champion, has owned and operated gyms for over 10 years, founder of NC Fit, and is probably the best all around in shape fit guy that I know. <laughs> and I think there's no better person to answer that question than with you. Or else I would say, chest and bias every single day. <laughs> that intro though. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. So um, yeah, I get the same question, right? If I had you know, three days a week, one hour a day, what should I be doing? And Do you I ever think go, that, why are you so lazy? Uh, only three times? No, only That's every That's the day. first way. That's, <laughs> why are you being so lazy, dude? So if you only have three days a week, one hour a day, or even if you have four or five days a week, um, here are some things to consider when you're looking at your training protocols. I think a long time ago, you know, it became a little bit more popular to um, maybe the selectorized equipment in the conventional gym. You kind of ran on the treadmill for a little while, then you went over, did back buys, chest tries. Now I think you've seen this kind of growth of this idea of functional style training where you're doing things like squatting, th doing thrusters, presses, and movements that you kind of see a little bit more outside the gym, trained in the gym. I think it's yeah. becoming more popular. Like right? how can I get in the gym better for outside? Yeah, and so the way that we're gonna talk about this is kind of the way that I think for if someone wants to get fit for life, right? To be able to keep up with their kids, be able to do daily tasks, to be able to have a functional application, this is my recommendation for them. If you want to aesthetics, look good, get bigger buys, whatever, maybe that's a different set of goals and maybe you have a little bit of different training protocol. This is more for what I was talking about before. Fit for life. Fit for I life. I like that, got it. So, you know, the way I like to think about every single day when you come into the gym uh, for yourself is you want to break it down in terms of warm up, warm up, uh, either strength or skill and then your workout. This is a, a way to look at it, not the only way to look at it. When I think about a warm up, I think about what is my goal? What's my goal for that day? Traditionally, it's two things. Increase my core body temperature and take my body through a full range of motion. So when you walk into the gym, you're probably cold, maybe you were sitting at a desk all day, maybe you just got up. And so things like burpees or riding the bike, riding, getting on the rower, going out for a jog, they start to increase your core body temperature, start to get your body a little bit warmer. What if you just had sex with your girlfriend, you're pretty warm? Do you need to still do this? <laughs> maybe, maybe, not the, maybe, not, maybe not the increase. Maybe you jump straight to the yeah. strength and skill. Maybe, maybe you jump straight to the range. But you might not have the strength, so maybe just the skill part. So depending on how talented you were with yeah. your girlfriend, mm, uh, depends on how many different positions you got into, right. which may change the way that you warm up. Got it. Makes so sense. if you were very dynamic in your warm up, yeah. right? Uh, things like you know Samson stretches. Things like, uh, you know, kind of walkouts, uh, again, like six part burpees where you're kind of going slow into a squat, drop into a burpee, come back up again. You want to work through a range of motion, right? Whether that's a pigeon stretch or whatever it may be, being dynamic through your range and then increasing core body temperature. Those are like the, the initial foundation goals. And this should take anywhere from like, let's just say for the sake of if you want to get in and out in an hour, 10 to 15 minutes. Got it. Get your body primed and ready, specifically if you have movements that day that might incorporate maybe your hips, your ankles, maybe you need to you know, hold a squat, right? And kind of open up the hips a little mm. bit, kind of open up the ankles, that's a great way to get you prepped. Yeah. Once you get through here, then you wanna work in your strength. And when it comes to strength, if you had three days a week, I would break it down in terms of squat, push, pull. That's just me. Where's uh, biceps in here? Um, they're everywhere. They're everywhere, okay. So when I think about uh, three major lifts, like three major functions. So when you're in the gym, I like to think about what, what function am I performing versus what muscle groups am I engaging? So let's just say you're squatting. What muscles are you engaging? A ton, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, you have yeah. all this weight on your back, you're engaging your quads, your hamstrings, your spinal erectus, Technically whatever. everything. Everything, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and, but, but the function is lowering and raising your center of mass. Right. Then you have things like a push. Let's just say a bench press, a press overhead, whatever it may be. That's a pressing action. Then you have a pull, which is like, let's just say a deadlift, sumo deadlift, or something of the, of the similar. Clean? Clean's in here too? Sure. And so when I think about it, these three need to get accomplished every single week. And so if you're on like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday split, You've now warmed up each time, yeah. and maybe you're having a little bit more focus on the particular function for that day. Then you break it down in terms of squat, push, press, and the way I like to do it, when you think about sets, 
right, is I'm thinking about five by fives, five by threes, and I'll explain with some maybe tempo. So, the so way, moderate to heavy load. Moderate to heavy load, and I like tempo. The reason why I like tempo is so let's just say you're squatting, you have a bar on the back, it's one, two, three, maybe a one, boom, right back up again as an example. And the reason why I'm a fan of tempo is because instead of going for one RM, just super, super heavy, you could gain strength by having time under tension. And tempo is a great way to have more time under tension and to reinforce good position. So let's just say you're squatting and maybe you know your knees should be driving out to keep you in good position. Maybe you know that your you know, chest should stay tall, but you kind of start going slow, you feel this, you could correct it easier than if you're moving so quickly. Mm. It could give you a good way to reinforce good yeah. mechanics. Yeah, yeah. So I like five by fives, like five by threes working sets. I like tempo where it's like three down, one hold back up again. That's a lot of time under tension. And the movements we're incorporating are ones that are unique in their ability to produce power. So this is, a, this is an interesting concept that really came from CrossFit, and I think it's one of the great things they showed, is um, you know, if you look at like power output is force times distance over time. And so what you're looking at is how much load can you move, what distance and how long does it take you to move it equals power output, and we can get that into here. But when you really talk about movements, you want ones that give you good bang for your buck. So if you're squatting, think about the range of motion I'm going super heavy load, a very long distance, back up again, versus something like a calf raise, right? Mm, yeah. I'm not saying a calf raise isn't fun to do, yeah. but it doesn't produce the same type of stimulus on your body yeah. as like a back squat True. or a deadlift. Look at the range of motion. So when you're thinking about movements you want to incorporate for your strength, think about movements that work a long range of motion. That's the goal. Got it. Because it incorporates a ton of different muscles and just gets your body a great stimulus. So you squat, you push, you pull, Movements that have a lot of power, sets that look like this with tempo, and then you finish it off with your workout. And when you think about your workout, you want to think about time domains, you want to think about styles. So the styles that I like are EMOMs, AMRAPs, and some people for time. So an EMOM is every minute on the minute. So let's just say it's... Do you have a, a set number you go to, like 10 or 15 or 20? Yes, yeah, so like here's a great EMOM. It's 15 burpees. Oh, I already don't like it. EMOM, 10. So you're gonna do an EMOM so every minute on the minute. You're doing 15. Doing 15 burpees for 10 minutes. So that's like my jam, my go-to, right? So let's just say you had a tough day at the office, you wanna get something done, you do 15 burpees, you look up at the clock, it takes you, let's just say, 40 seconds. You rest for the remainder of the 20, you do it again. Wow. And every minute on the minute for 10 minutes. And what it does though, is the reason why it's so impactful is because it's hitting this time domain somewhere between, we like 10 to 20 minutes. It's like a good window where you kind of work this aerobic and anaerobic. So you kind of get this fast burst, but you also get a little bit longer. And I found that for my training, when I live in that 10 to 20 minute range, it allows me to go run a half marathon, but also allows me to go pull a heavy deadlift. It's a nice, nice blend for I me. See. And, and that seems like that's the goal for most people's general fitness. They don't have to run over 20 miles, but they also want to be relatively strong in the gym. So this is like a, a good sweet spot. Yeah, I think anywhere from our gyms, like with all of our workouts we do, we live in that sweet spot about 12 to 20 minutes. That's what we like. It allows our athletes to go longer if they need to, but also allows our athletes to go shorter. And so this is an EMOM style, so it's every minute on the minute. I would highly recommend it for anybody who's interested in training because it gives you a quantifiable goal using a clock. And that's something that's really cool. So you're in your garage and it just sucks, right? Yeah. Be like, dude, I'm gonna do 10 push-ups every 30 seconds. But now it's, you can motivate yourself against the clock instead yeah. of getting motivated by the coach. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually do these yeah. when I'm watching TV at home sometimes. If I just need to like do a, a quick workout for 10 minutes and I know my kid is kind of distracted for 10 yeah. minutes, yeah, I do like a quick EMOM. Perfect. And then you also have AMRAPs, right? And so what an AMRAP is, is as many reps as possible. Yep. And the reason why that one's good is let's just say it's an AMRAP 15. You can set a clock for 15 minutes. You know you're gonna work for 15 minutes. During that time, you're super present, super focused, and you do, for the sake of argument, five push-ups, five squats, and five sit-ups. And you repeat that for 15 minutes. And That's, when you're, you see how many like rounds or cycles you can get. Yes, you're super focusing on it. And the goal is when you're looking at the styles, right, AMRAPs or EMOMs, what you also want to do is combine movements that have like unique functions. So for example, if you went from push-up to burpee to dip, your chest would burn out. You wouldn't really get much of a cardio response. You would basically, your stamina, your, your arms would just give out, right? Yeah. It'd be like if you just kept doing a bunch of push-ups yeah, yeah, yeah. versus if you did five push-ups, five squats, five sit-ups, you could pretty much keep rotating through because you're use, utilizing different functions for that, right? Gotcha. One's a press, one's a squat, and one's a sit-up. Yeah. 
So when you're designing your workouts, I'd recommend walk into the gym, get warmed up, get that core body temperature going, identify what your strength is going to be for that day. Are you going to squat, push, or pull? How long, how long do you spend here? Because we get 10 to 15, 10 to 15. This is probably going to take, so that's 30, so about, you know, 20 to 25 minutes here, Got right? Because you're only doing three to five working sets, five working sets, and if you do that every two minutes, let's just say, you know, that's 10 minutes. So let's just say you give yourself three minutes per set, that's 15 minutes there. So by the time you go 15 minutes here, let's just call it 20 minutes here for the sig argument, um, you know, you're at basically 55 minutes or so, and you're good to go. Where, where should I go on Instagram? Should I go on Instagram between here? Or should I go between here? Um, or in the middle of the workout? Instagram in yeah. between sets here. Perfect, okay. So the only real time, you know, if you're looking at three days, three days a week, one hour a day, your warm up is key. Then from there, your strength work, you do have downtime. Because what you want to do is you want to give your body like this moment to kind of recharge. So let's yeah. just say you hit your set, then you can go ahead and sit down, click Instagram, right? Then go hit your set. But then once you hit your AMRAP, there's no such thing as Instagram. Yeah, you're in it's the just, zone, you're, you're locked in. You're in the zone. Imams, AMRAPs, or four-time workouts. And if people want more recommendations, then go visit our, you know, nc.fit, Jason Kleep Instagram. We have a bunch, of, bunch of stuff up there. But this is at a high level what I would recommend. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Hell yeah. Get fit. Even though it's only three times a week, one hour a day, you can get a lot of work done. You can get through all the strength, skill, warm up. Make your girlfriend happy beforehand, so there's no excuses. Or after. can you make your girlfriend happy afterwards too? If you, you might be too tired. You might be too know? tired. So try to make her happy over here. All right. See you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching this video. Like always, go to barbellbrigade.com. We have a full-on blog there where our buddy Jacob Ross, who's an elite-level sports performance coach, he writes weekly blogs of really dope knowledge about fitness, strength training, and health, and make that a resource where you can come and learn about different things. And always, you can get our apparel, gear, supplements, and everything at barbellbrigade.com. See you guys next time.